call is being recorded. So we're recording it now. And welcome to today's day. It is June 22nd, 21st. Wow. Our next call is going to be on July 5th. And it's going to be at a new time. It's going to be at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So it's 5 o'clock for my West Coast peeps who are in Pacific Standard Time. Um, while people are still coming on, a few things that I'm really, really passionate about that I want to make sure I say is that, one, this is an open discussion. Um, I, I really want you guys to be intentional about getting exactly what you need to get from our discussion tonight. So please ask your questions, chime in with your tips and best practices. There are no dumb questions, no matter how long you've been here, um, you have value to add. Um, also, speaking of no, no matter how long you've been here, um, it doesn't matter how tenured or new you are, you belong here, you belong in the discussion, you have value to add. Um, this is not an opportunity for you to yourself to other people um, you don't know their life you don't know their effort <laughs> um, and the only way that I think that you are quote-unquote failing is failing is if you don't try or for if you don't give it your own so just know that you're going to hear you know audacious goals being had and 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 being pursued and if your goals are not the same but they're stretching yourself you're winning so run your own race um, and something that you're doing is working so lastly this is not an opportunity for you to not lastly this is not an opportunity i have one more this is not an opportunity for you to be chasing after every shiny object um we are going to brainstorm four different topics five different topics tonight that means we're going to get a lot of tips and best practices and things that you can go implement right now that is not the purpose of this conversation y'all i do not want this to be a oh i'm not doing that i'm not doing that let me go no if there's something that does speak to you and your culture then yes absolutely go try it but i do not want you guys chasing after every shiny object okay this is the last i just want to hit hard again that this is an interactive call and i am going to be doing very little speaking why because you guys are the experts um the value that i, I do have value the value that i bring is that i work with so many wonderful coaches again i work with the three through eight star diamonds in the southeast region um but you guys are the experts you guys are the ones in the trenches and so i'm going to chime in as needed but you don't want to hear from me we want to hear from you guys so a few announcements and then we'll get on to our introduction. One is the up and, coming, up and comers promotion. Y'all, I really think that this is a, a, an amazing, we're giving away three trips to Riri Maya. That's the Success Club trip for next year, 2018. We're giving away three trips every month to coaches who are diamond and below. The past, uh, this past month, we announced that the winner had 50 personal Success Club points and 60 coach uh, PS points. So I think our highest member in our group, in the black group, had 44 personal success club points with seven of her PS coaches uh, in success club two. And that's Demita Smothers. So, hey, we can do this. And I really want someone from this group to win. Um, that pays for your stay while you're in Mexico and Riviera Maya next, uh, next year. So if you are going for big numbers, if that's your thing, I, I, I gave you that number, the winner, what she earned last month on purpose. Let's do this. Um, also, photo op, earn success club for a chance to win a photo op with one of our celebrity trainers. Chris Downey will be there, our newest one. Um, we're talking about brand building tonight, and these pictures will definitely come in handy as more and more programs with these celebrity trainers are being released. Our goal with Beach Body On Demand is that you will begin to see new programs being added in there every six to nine weeks. That means more and more opportunity for us to put ourselves uh, with this, ourselves with this. So that means not using stock photo. So you want to be earning these type of things. These are business producing things to, to earn. Um, uh, also, Success Club this month gets you a John C. Maxwell webinar. He's my personal favorite leadership coach. Uh, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership is a game changer, and you earn it for free by helping three people. Okay, summit is 30 days away. Um, we're planning a very quick meetup with a picture for our group. There's going to be some details to follow as we finalize them. And I think that that is all I have for announcements, and I did it in seven minutes. Perfect. All right, so now that's enough for me. Let's see who is on this call. Let's see if we can do this in about 10, 15 minutes. I would love to know uh, your name, where you live, your current rank, and 
Let's do a goal that you're striving for this year. And the reason why I like to do this, even though it does take time, is because one, this is a virtual business and we all have each other. What if somebody lives around the corner? That's a potential friend to go meet up with, an uh, accountability partner, maybe a success partner. So I really, I, I really do, even though it's time consuming, think that this is a really important part to our mastermind session. So what's your name, where you live, your current rank, and something big that you're going, your, your goal for this year. All right, I'm just gonna start at the top of, uh, Roshane is gone. I'm gonna start with you, Crystal. Hi, everyone, I'm Crystal Galladay. I am an Emerald Coach for the Lifetime Diamond. I live in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, but I'm from New York, and my goal by Summit is to regain my diamond status and by the end of the year to be five star. You're on mute, Keyshawn. You thinking I'm being all smart. Miss Crystal. Yes, ma'am. I, I just introduced myself. Did you hear me? Oh, the other Crystal. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Crystal Monroe. I live in Frisco, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. Um, I'm a diamond coach, and my goal is to be two-star by the end of this year. Love it. Welcome. Pedrita! Perdita? <laughs> me? How do I Hi. say it? I'm sorry. <laughs> Perdita. Perdita. Yes. Hi, my name is Perdita. I'm new to this. I started as a discount coach. Um, Bear with me. It's taking time, but I will get it. Um, I will be attending the summit. I live in um, West Haven, Connecticut. And um, I don't know. I think I have no rank at this time. It's been like a month or two for me. So I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Well, welcome to the family and to the Coach Network, and you are in good hands, girlfriend, and make sure that you get, if you have any questions, like I said earlier, there are no stupid or novice questions, you, that is what this mastermind, this group is for. So welcome, and we look forward to your success. Ms. Thank Shana. you. This is for me, sorry. <laughs> yep, we can hear you. Okay, good. I'm on Lego duty right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Shiana. Hold on. Oh, that's better. Oh, my name is Shiana. <laughs> I live in Montreal. Um, that's in Canada. I am an Emerald coach, but right now I'm just at coach, so I need to get that back up there. And my goal for, well, originally my goal was to be home by the time my son started school. I got laid off from work, so I am home right now. So now it's a completely different goal. I want to be able to stay home. <laughs> Man, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome, Miss Kimberly. Hi, my name is Kim Sanders. I live in Jacksonville. I'm currently in down in Melbourne for work. Um, but let's see, I'm an Emerald coach, and my goal by the end of the year is to be diamond. Awesome. And Piper. Hey Piper. Hello. Hey. Did you, I'm sorry, did you hear what we're doing? We're in, we're doing our little introductions. Oh, I missed it. Oh, okay, okay. So we're, I'm asking your name, where you live, your current rank, and a goal that you're going for this year. Okay. Um, my name is Piper Stewart. I'm an Emerald coach. I'm from Atlanta, born and raised. And um, one goal that I'm going for this year is to be a two-star diamond coach. Two-star. I love it. All right. Um, let's see. We're going to leave off. DeLorean, Miss Alexander. Hi. So, as you said, I'm DeLorean Alexander. Um, I am in Houston, Texas. Um, I wasn't enrolled, but now I'm a coach. And so my goal by the end of the year is to make it to diamond coach. Okay, and you said you're currently an Emerald coach? Um, I was an Emerald, but I'm coach status now. Okay, all right. Um, let's see, who have I uh, really thought? And then for my ladies who don't have their video on, uh, Joel, Latoya, do I, are you guys just listening in? Or are you able to converse with us tonight? Hey, Artina, how are you? 
Hey, I'm. Oh. Go, go for it, Mr. Joel. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Joel, aka Hendo, but I'm uh, stationed in Washington State right now, but I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, currently Emerald Plant. Uh, one star diamond by the end of the year. Uh, that's about it. Love it. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Miss Artina, we are doing our introductions, your name, where you live, your current rank, and a goal that you're going for this year. I know hey, hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Um, my name is Artina Marie. I reside in Charlotte. Stuff in my face right now. <laughs> I reside in Charlotte. Um, I've been a coach since April of last year, so I just came up on my year. Um, my goal is to wake up in the morning five-star. That's the goal. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Um, and just to help my coaches, um, you know, get to Success Club 10 and help those people where it comes very natural, where it's not something they're struggling with every month. So Absolutely. we can focus on other things. Absolutely. Well, glad to have you here. Glad and to Ms. be Latoya. here. Hey, everybody. I'm Latoya Tate. I live in Albany, New York, but I still call Harlem, New York home. Um, right now, I'm emeralds, but I'm a lifetime diamond, so my goal is to get back to the diamond and make it a solid diamond and to reach for a two-star diamond by the end of the year. Awesome. And let me go to Janelle, and then we'll go to Courtney, and then to Nina. Hi, my name is Janelle. I grew up in New York. I currently live in Somerville. South Carolina, right outside of Charleston. I am a coach. My goal is to be an emerald, hopefully, in the next month or so, and work my way up to Diamond by the end of the year. Okay, let's do this. Ms. Courtney. Hi, everybody. Sorry I'm a little bit late. I couldn't get my internet connection going. Um, Hi, Keyshawn. I think we're saying, so I'm Courtney Collins. I live in Alexandria, Virginia, just outside DC. Um, I'm an Emerald coach. I've been coaching for a little over a year now. Um, and I'm so ready to be diamond. Um, so my goal is to be diamond by summit. Um, and I would love to finish the year as premier. Um, that's my big goal. Oh, I love it. Okay. And actually, I'm, Nina, I'm going to actually go to Duan and then come to you because you're starting our conversation. Um, Miss Duan, are you able to talk? Oh, there she is. Yes, I'm in the kitchen as always. Uh, my name is Duan. I am a lifetime diamond coach. Um, my goal is to be three star for the end of the year. I live in Canada. I'm in, well, for those of you who don't know Canada, I'm in Toronto. For those of you who know Canada, I'm in Brampton. We have two Canadians on our call. <laughs> yes, I saw Montreal. Yes. <laughs> and did you already say your goal? I'm sorry, I missed it. Oh, yeah. I want to be I'm aiming for three star by the end of the year. Love it. Love it. Glad to have you. And then Miss Nina, who is also going to um, lead our conversation, you know, Beachbody Challenge oh, quarterly like planner, founder of the group, and branding expert. So I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then I'm going to have her just jump right into our discussion this evening. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so my name is Nina Milan. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, these headphones are weird. You know how it is. Um, all right. So, yeah, so I'm from Central Jersey. Um, I've been a coach for eight years. This is my eighth year as a coach. I'm a Beachbody lifer. You're going to see me here forever. I'm not going anywhere. I love this company um, and I'm very committed. So my goal, so I'm a lifetime two star, but I haven't been able to enjoy those benefits for some time. One of my diamonds moved on to another company and uh, actually both of mine did. So I'm in the process of developing brand new diamonds from the start and helping their journey really become like me, like a lifer. And I was a customer lead, so don't give up on those customer leads that call up and buy the infomercial products at the end of the night because you never know who they will turn into. Um, but yeah, so my goal is five star. I know that it's something that's within reach. It's a big, hairy, scary goal, and I just need to go for it and push it. So for all of you here, just know that whatever you set your mind to do, everything else will follow. So we just got to all band together 
right? As a team, collective team, we're all one team, one dream, um, and, and reach our goals together. So, yeah. So I missed the first part of the call, Kishan. <laughs> I know you had an agenda, so. Yeah, so we're gonna go, jump right on in. So I've asked for Nina to, since she has such great brand knowledge and brand building knowledge, to lead our discussion. So remember guys, this is an open discussion, but I always like to have a leader kind of start it. So if you've noticed in our previous masterminds, I've asked someone to kind of start our conversation. So I've asked for Nina to um, share some of her tips and best practices around branding. All right, so cool. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything in the beginning, so cool. So branding. So I'm a graphic designer by trade. This is actually my profession. I love it. I will always continue to do it for the rest of my life, no matter where Beachbody takes me. Um, just because I'm very passionate about art and, and just your identity of who you want to be on the internet. Um, as coaches, we are influencers. So we need to start thinking of ourselves as that. Like, what kind of change do we want to promote? What kind of message do we want to promote? What kind of image do we want to promote? And one thing I know is that your, your page is your storefront. When you don't show up, then people don't show up to really kind of just see what you're about and want to join you. So, you know, what you do online follows you. And branding is a really huge part of that. Um, I think Shanta, can you mute? I love you, girl. <laughs> She's like, what? I'll Thank mute. I'll, I'll keep people muted for us. <laughs> Thank you, babe. Uh, so, so when it comes to branding, you really just have to think about, like, what are the things that are unique about you that you want people to see? And number one, photography, if you don't know how to take good photos and you're not, you know, paying extra attention to like how you're styling, composing things, looking at how companies, not just other coaches or other influencers, but really how companies market because they're spending millions of dollars and they're showing you exactly how to do it right. So the number one that I, thing that I say first is pick a brand that you love that's related to your industry. And it doesn't even have to be like, if you love cooking, like look at food and wine magazine or look at, if you love cosmopolitan, like look at how they, you know, are do their editorial or online. If it's brides, if you really love their typefaces, like start what I, I like to say is called a swipe folder. So when I'm really looking to develop a brand, the first thing I do is my research. I really look at like, what is it about what I'm trying to come across, like what I'm trying to show people, and who's doing it well? So that's the number one thing. So start what's called a swipe folder. You can make a folder on your desktop, and I also have one in my browser. And when I'm just on the internet, I bookmark uh, brands and pages and things that I like, and I save images of brands and ads and typography and photography and styles and things that I really love so that I'm always having inspiration to go back to um, so that when I'm composing things for my brand, I can mimic the style or mimic the way that they laid their type out or, you know, how they compose their photos. Um, you know, I like to say with art, there is no, art is not original. It's all kind of imitation and we all borrow. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that as well. Same thing goes for coaches and other influencers online, like save their, their Instagram pages, look at other coaches that are doing things. You never want a direct copy because you're never gonna be them, they're never gonna be you, so don't ever copy exactly what somebody does, especially word for word. I know that on the internet we like to see a post that somebody puts out and we're like, ooh, that's good, and we copy their, their post and we just put our own image. Always put your own spin on it. Um, always talk from your heart and your conviction. Um, you Use it as inspiration, but don't copy. You always want to you know, be original in the things that you put across. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you have a mutual friend and they see 10 people that post the same posts, it loses its authenticity. It loses its pizzazz and its, its jam for why they're going to connect with you, you know, based on what you put out. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, does anybody here, I just like to get some discussion going. Does anybody here have a brand that they absolutely love? that they follow? Is, it, is anybody following any brands right now that they're kind of mimicking what they do? No? Really? Your um, own? I don't um, have a specific brand that um, 
because you know I'm ADD and I'm all over the place. So what I do is I do bookmark like what you do. I do it on Instagram and you know you can bookmark pictures on Instagram. So it isn't just like one, it's like as I see things, uh, bookmark it and then you have that bookmark section in your Instagram that you're able to pull up and see all of the things that you said. And to piggyback also about what you said about, because people do do that, that whole like, they see something, oh, this post is getting so much traction. We're gonna all copy and paste it. And a good thing to do is if you you feel like that that was a great post, it's kind of like just to piggyback on what Nina said, you can take a post, but then you need to add what that post means to you. So you can say something like, hey, I saw this, this resonated with me and let me tell you why. And so then it becomes a, oh, okay, that's why it was shared. Give your you to it, if that makes sense. Like give your you to it. If you found something that was so share worthy that you needed to do it, then kind of admit to it, fess up to it and be like, man, I saw this circulating and I thought that this was cool. But let me tell you what I think about X, Y, Z. Or you saw a quote, like what people won't do is they won't expound. They'll just randomly share or just randomly copy and paste. And, th and you don't get any feeling of who you are. So back to what you said about the brand, I bookmark on Instagram. That's where I bookmark. You have that bookmark section. If you guys have never seen it, you can just like mash a thing and you'll have a whole curated thing of, stuff and mine comes from everywhere it's not a specific brand but i'd be interested in hearing what you do Joel, awesome Joel, i know that you've done a really good job branding and rebranding yourself what are some of your tips especially being a new coach how do you begin the process of branding what is that <clears throat> hey y'all can y'all hear me yes okay good deal um so I'm not sure if Nina went over this. Um, she's the pro. But I, I dabble in this because I like things that are pretty. It's just my thing. I always have. So, <laughs> so if, it's, if it's making something pretty, then I get excited about that. Probably a little bit too excited. I probably spend too much time on branding. Um, and I should be inviting more. So, <laughs> um, so, so what I recommend is this. Um, I do what's called a storyboard for anybody that I'm helping with branding. I do it in interior design. I do it with graphic design. I call it a storyboard. And you're just going to make a decision from the beginning. What do you want people to feel when they look at your brand, right? So when you look at the Glam Squad or Joyo Hayes, the transformation coach, you get a feel for me being kind of fun really glitzy and glamoury, but you should also get a feeling of warmth. Then I choose my colors. You have two basic colors that you're always going to use. I call them primaries. Mine are black and white. Then you choose a, se a secondary set of colors. I then have a purple and a pink. And then I've got some tertiary colors, right? All my stuff uses those colors. So it doesn't matter if my graphic is absolutely horrible, it blends with my brand. Shanta uses a blue, a pink, a yellow, right? And all of her stuff meshes together. When you see it, you know it's hers before you even read it. Nina has a really, um, um, Pastel pink. Photogenic, right, and she uses pastels, but it's very artsy. It's very clear that she's into art, into um, graphic design, right? Her lines are straight, things like that. So what do you want people to feel when they look at your stuff? Do you want them to think that you're fun? And what colors bring to mind fun? Are you a babe boss? Does that mean pink to you? So you use pink all of the time? Choose your colors, your primaries, your secondaries, Stick to that, right? Secondly, choose two types of font that you're going to use. That's it, that's all. That's it, that's all. So if you use Canva, then go in there, find your squiggly font. If you like squiggly font, stick to that one. Your secondary font, which is going to be square and easy to read, stick to that one. I shouldn't come to your page or I don't want to come. I don't know who I'm looking at when I go to some people's page because there's no consistency, right? So just be consistent with those things, colors and 
the typography, the, the type of font that you're using um, when you use it. And like Nina said, and Shanta has said as well, nothing is wrong with utilizing inspiration. When I first started, I would find posts that I like the graphic on, then I would go to Canva and play with it and see how I could recreate it myself, right? Was the square in this place, the circle in this place? Another thing is use your, pic use your face. Like, I hate photos, absolutely despise them. I hate video, absolutely despise it. But people are going to respond to your pretty face. People want to see you smiling, not stock photos, not picture. Just use yourself, you guys, and then slap your, your colors on it, right? I'm going to hold up this bottle. It's my water bottle, Do you see? but it's gold, right? Do you see that? <laughs> this is my brand. All things gold, glam, glitter. But that's who I am. It's who I've always been. Maybe you're a little more muted. Stick to who you are, but choose your primary colors, your secondary colors, and choose your two fonts and roll with that. It keeps things so simple. Even in Canva, you can save your branding. You can save your colors. You can save your font to use them over and over again with, with your brand. Love so, it. thank you. You're welcome. Nina, passing it back to you. I love that. No, she's, she's absolutely right. And so one of the things, I'm glad you said that because that's what I was going to move into next. So thank you for going over that. Um, but one of the things I wanted to say when we're looking at brands, and I'm just going to share my screen really quickly because... Um, one of the top brands for me that I'm inspired by is Nike because I just think that they do such an amazing job of keeping things clean and to the point and they highlight their main asset, which is their sneaker. So like if we're looking here, what's the first thing that you see? One or two fonts, black and white, clean type. Everything is just clean and then it makes the shoe the star you're the star of your brand. So nothing should compete with you, especially when it comes to typography. And I think people now that there's so many apps that they can design, they get very carried away because they have all these like different, you know, they press a button and 50 different fonts come up or styles of fonts, but you should really only stick to maybe like one or two configurations and pick one or two fonts. And like, so one of the things I love is like, they use very simple sentences, three miles, rule breaker, um, and just when you go to their store, everything about what they do is very, very simple. Another one I wanted to show you was some of the top fitness influencers on Instagram. I'm constantly going back to these women that are just, they just have such amazing brands. This is on pop sugar. And I, and I actually come back to this article very often, um, just because I really love the way that they, um, just the way that they do everything really. So, so this is Kayla. If you guys don't know about Kayla, she's like the number one Instagram or she has like her own brand, her own app, a huge community of millions and millions of followers. And so when you see her, you see a lot about her life. She shows a lot of um, transformation photos because there's just so many people that are just getting great results of what she has to offer. And, but when you see her original photos, the number one thing you see is you don't see a bunch of text all over her photos. That's key. And I'd actually like to see you guys using less of that so you're showcasing more of you. Like you want to invite the viewer in to make their conclusion about what's going on. You want to keep them guessing. You want to keep them interested. And you notice like here, like when she does post text, it's like a simple quote. Very sim simplified. Right? So like she's not doing anything crazy extraordinary, but she's just keeping her own content interesting so that you want to look at it. And so there are some apps that I'm going to recommend to you guys. Um, number one, my favorite photography app is the ViscoCam, D-S-C-O. I just love their filters and I think it is, it's what professional photographers use when they're, you know, using filters on their phones. Um, another one that has a good brand. I want to find her on here. Um, Massey Arias is another one who has an amazing brand, an amazing body and story. And I think she's in this list. Um, hey, Nina. Yes, Nina. go ahead. Yep. Uh, can you repeat that again, that app? 
uh, v VSCO, Visco Cam. I'm going to find um, her blog. VSCO? V VSCO okay. Cam. Visco Cam. Um, hold on, Is that the name yeah. of the first one? That's the name of the photography, like the filter app that I really love. So I highly recommend using that one. Um, another one that I really love, I do have Canva mobile. I like the desktop app better. And I'm a designer and I use Canva. So that should tell you how much I believe in doing things that are simple because I don't have all day to be spending in Photoshop and in, in uh, InDesign. So I do use Canva very often to make things. Um, another type of type app that I love is Typorama. I use that very often if you don't have that one um, because they just have really simple typefaces. And I use Word Swag and Over, and those are pretty much it. For my um, collages, I use Pick Stitch. And if I have any like uh, blemishes or things, I want to, I use Facetune um, for that. But don't be photoshopping your pictures. Don't be like sucking in the inches and stuff. Uh uh, don't do that. <laughs> I can tell. So would you think that, or would you say that there is a difference as you're branding yourself, um, branding yourself on Facebook versus Instagram versus website, or is it all the same? There is no difference. Your brand should be consistent throughout all platforms. I do think that you shouldn't really be spending time on more than two social media platforms because you're not going to be able to do everything well, unless you have a virtual assistant or somebody helping you. It's going to be very hard because sometimes you want to keep content exclusive for certain audiences so for instance one of the things i love to do to drive traffic back is that i will make exclusive content on one platform and advertise myself on one to drive traffic back to the other so for instance if i wrote a blog post and this is one of the most underused things and i'm gonna tell you guys right now you need to start doing it so on your page you have the ability to write blogs and a lot of people don't do this through the notes portion you can add a simple header and you can actually write like an article that's shareable and boostable to your page so a lot of people don't actually blog on their facebook page but the nice thing about that is you can add the hashtags it'll come up in searches um, and it, it gives you a little bit more of a story or a dynamic dynamic content that you can write out so one of the things I really love to do is if I say that I blogged and most people are like, what the heck is a blog on Facebook? I never heard about that. But if you say like I blogged on Facebook, people are going to be like, hmm, what is that? But I'll go to Instagram and maybe I'll make like a quick little video or a snap or whatever um, or a post and I'll say, go check out. And now you can add links, hyperlinks to Instagram, which is like, like amazing. <laughs> Um, so whether you're adding the links directly or using Linktree to add all of your different URLs, I really, really love um, doing that to drive traffic. Or you can say, I put exclusive content on Snapchat, and you say that on Facebook, and you drive traffic to Snapchat, or one or the other. You always want to use one platform to highlight the other and vice versa. So depending on what your focus is, you can drive your traffic to either of those platforms. But really, one or two put your drive and focus there. Don't try to be all over the internet because you're just not going to do it well. I have yet to see people do it well on more than two platforms. And I'm talking about mostly coaches. So, so that's really important. We're going to get into leads and generating leads, right? They stem from- Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> they stem from this idea of being able to bring yourself. But before we move on to that, I want to see, do we have any questions? I asked for you guys to make sure that you're intentional tonight intentional about getting exactly what you need to get from this evening so are there any lingering questions tips you have something in your heart you want to share with the crew yeah um, or ask you know, me you and your husband have done an amazing job of branding yourselves together and collectively and even your husband individually the thick cop our team i know that you've done an amazing job branding yourself this very real authentic i'm hard but i have a big heart self so do you guys have some some tips and best practices also um Hey, so what I was going to say is I, um, like I, I used to like stalk, um, Nina as well as, um, do I pronounce it? Joel, Joel and Shanta. Like I would spend like hours looking at y'all pages. Like, what do I, you know, what do I do when I, um, first became a coach? 
Well, now I just, I really love the graphic designs. Like I really love what you guys are doing, but I feel like for me, I want to make sure I still remain relatable. So I still want to be professional. Like I don't want to take pictures with stuff in the background. I don't want to take pictures that aren't clear and bright and focused. But when it gets into like um, all the really, really nice stuff that you guys do, I have a hard time doing that because I want to make sure my followers can look at me and say, okay, I can do that. Because I never want them to feel like they can't, um, they can't coach because they can't do this or that. They already have so many um, reasons why it wouldn't work for them. So it's like, I just want to show them that I'm just a normal mom of three kids. I don't really do anything special. I just kind of, you know, make it like a, a real world. And I'm worried that the moment I start getting fancy and pretty with it, then it'll be like, okay, I don't know if I can do that. So I actually follow mom wears, I think it's mom wear heels. She used to be Herbalife um, and she nurses like me and she has the kids and she just kind of, she never really got fancy. And I really like that. That really worked for me. What advice would you have in regards to not dipping too much across that line where it's like, does that make sense? I'm really trying to like. <laughs> no, it makes sense. It makes so much sense. Honestly, so like you don't have to ever come across too fancy just because you clean up your branding, right? It just really means being very consistent in, like Joel Joel said, the posts, the type of posts, your fonts, your colors, your filters. Even filters. Don't use more than like two filters. Like find a filter you love. So that if I go to your Instagram, I go to your Facebook page, everything looks like it's your life because it's, it's shot through the same lens. If you start doing all these crazy colors, then it starts to feel like it's not authentic. So like, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, as you become more successful, becoming more of an influencer and having more polish to your brand there's nothing wrong with that like you see the bombshells and you see melanie metro and you see every top coach in our business has done that okay. and they started from humble beginnings um and i just kind of I'm, I'm like pink is my thing like i like pink and so anytime i do do words i try to keep it at pink and anytime i use the same contrast number on my instagram so i guess that's what you guys are talking about like i make sure i use you the same one each time so when they go to my instagram they're not, it doesn't like a bunch of mess. It kind of looks like a magazine. Is that what you guys are getting at? Exactly. Okay. It's, cu it's curated content. And you have to understand, we're in a visual world. We're in a, such a graphic design typography. Like people are so tuned into that because of the digital space. Before we had social media sites that we spent hours on every day. Remember what website, websites used to look at? Like nobody wanted to look at a freaking website before, but now our world is literally in our hand. So there's nothing wrong with stepping up your A game with design because people appreciate the effort. Do you feel so. like you get coaches who want to work harder because they feel like they have to match you? Cause I was thinking that too. I was like, well, maybe if I change my graphics, then I would attract people who are on that level, I guess, who want to, Honestly, I don't think that your branding determines the type of coach that you're going to attract. Like if they're okay. going to join for you and you're going to tell them in the beginning, like, this is where I was like, show them the crappy stuff you posted and then where you are now and tell them how you learned it mm -hmm. and how, if you did it, then they can do it as well. Like keep, maybe keep that as part of your onboarding and say, look where you can go and show people how they can elevate their lifestyle through this experience. Um, and I yeah, I think it'll be something genuine that you can offer if you can teach them your tips and tricks as well. And I think people will appreciate that. So okay. let, let's go. Thank you so much for leaving that. Oh, we have a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Angelique. Hi. Um, get, good evening, everyone. So I've been wondering um, if there is an app that has a, a white background, right, where you can create a white background. Um, I see so many clean pictures with the white backgrounds and Right now, for me, all you're going to get is like my brown sofa, my brown walls, and the artwork that my husband does. That is the only area I have to do my workouts, but I'd like to change it up. Um, do you have any recommendations on how to change your background? Can I say something really quick to that, and then I'll let you answer? Um, so 
at the beginning of the conversation, I mentioned that this was 2.0. So I want you guys to also realize that you can start where you're at right now. It doesn't have to be this immaculate, uh, all these colors, you know, typography, the three. We're talking about 2.0. We're talking about just taking it to another level. Um, so, and, and this is an evolution. And so start where you are and know that you are a human brand. And as you continue to evolve and get better and make more money, you're going to be better, get better at branding. Your branding is going to be enhanced. So I just, that was on my heart to make sure I said that we're, we're talking about a little bit elevated branding. So start where you're at and be okay with that. And you can be successful with that. Okay. I'm gonna let you answer that. So I think that everybody has the ability to change their photography space in their home to find an angle that they really love. And I think it's the same thing for like your workout space when you're going to like decide where you're going to do your workouts. So I think one of the things that you can do is like take a, a, an assessment of where you do most of your activity, where you're going to film and just maybe change that up a little bit and move things around so that you kind of have a consistent space. You don't ever have to have just like a plain white wall. Like I installed a photo backdrop in my gym because I'm starting to do more videos, but I definitely for years did not have that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Also take it outside. Like just use the side of your house where you just have like the siding or brick or whatever. Um, don't feel that you have to just have it like a studio type of setting. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a background. One of the things that I really like to do is if you have like the distance to move a little, have yourself a little bit closer to the camera so that everything in the back is kind of like not the focus and you're more of the focus so that everything's not so tight and close and dense and packed together. Um, and then also work your angles. A corner of a room works really well when you're shooting instead of just straight on flat. Um, so that really helps like you see me in my video like you're seeing the corner of my room right now Right, you see like two panels there. So it makes it more of an interesting space um, And makes me the focus so you can definitely try that but don't feel pressured to have a, a Clean like Zen, you know blank space. I don't think that that's necessary but maybe look around see and post pictures in the group if you're like does this work? Does this look good? Like we can totally give you feedback if that helps. Absolutely. I want to jump in real quick. Um, I want to first go back to Artina and say about what you were asking about, um, do you think that that would mess up your brand? And if it would bring better coaches, number one, none of it brings better coaches. That's girl. Don't worry about that. Number two, the thing is, I think what they're, Nina is like the, like the master at this stuff. I'm not. I'm kind of like Joy I just like pretty stuff. And so I just like pretty stuff. And so I am actually, like I'll say it again, I am very ADD. If you look, I am not clean lines. I am not actually. I'm totally different from that. But people know that about me. That, that becomes who I am. People know that I am cursive, right? I don't use clean lines or clean lettering um, because I am not like that. I am not a straight line, clean. I am a woo, and that's what you're going to get from me if that makes sense. So when you guys are just starting, like you see where I am, if you see any of my videos, you know that this is my basement with that yeah. phrase. I don't have a ceiling. And I um, shoot right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Only thing I went and bought was this little light up here that sometimes the light is good and sometimes not so much. And I did that, Artina, because this is my real basement right now. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, like you said, um, people are going to relate to, you're going to just relate to the fact that, honey, my basement my, is not finished. This is just halfway finished. This is what it is. This is what we work out. And you're going to be okay with that. And we still get just as many views and just as, and we don't have some kind of gym. It's not all, it's a mess. You know what I mean? And um, when you are, the thing about, I think what helps most with like the branding thing is when you're talking, I'm talking, when you're talking about like just pictures. I think that you really get to show you to me when you're live. So when you're live and you need to go to your space and your kid is calling you and all of that kind of stuff, there's your real life right there. And I have made it in my business that although I've cleaned some things up and I got like a little, some stuff, you know, that I do because I do like pretty things. I, you know, I want some of that, but there's sometimes I can't get to that and that's okay too. So people have become, they have come to expect 
both from me. So you don't, you're not surprised if you see the ceiling is crazy. You're not surprised if you see an iPhone photo that's not so great. But you're also not surprised if I get dressed up, honey, and it look like a magazine. It's going to, and because you're going to get, because what I have developed people to understand about me is I'm all of those things. I'm a mess. I'm a mama. I got this going on and that going on, but I like to get glam and fly. So it's what you create. That is what they expect. They will expect what you give them. But if you don't give them something, like, and then you can tell the truth about that. Um, one of the things for me was I did some of that um, on purpose because I was hearing, um, like you, I went to a, a, a convention thing, uh, you know, outside for Platinum Presenters, and they were talking about that, how they curated all the polls. And I was like, eh, sometimes. But for me, I felt the same way. I was like, if every pose is not going to be me going to find some perfect backdrop and some perfect background, because for me, that doesn't represent my real life right now. And if that is what I'm trying to give to you, I want to give you a piece of shots. I want you to be able to get me and everything is not going. I don't have a photographer that follows me around, honestly. I just don't. And so um, you're going to get some of that too. So you're able to like, like fuse in a lot of you that keep it realness that you want to keep. You can still have that. You can still have that. Just know that you can. And then to the other young lady that was asking about the backgrounds, like when you make your videos, what you can do, um, what I do is I completely like made my space. Like it's so little, I wish I could show you upstairs, but it would take too long. Like girl, for real, all I did was took some like, there's some little flowers and I got a little stand. And I put the flowers on the stand. I have this thing on the back of my wall and I have a chair and that is what you see. Like it's this big. And when I take the camera, that's all people can see. But I totally made that up. Like that's not what my office looks like. So when I finish the video, I have to move that stuff back to where it goes. It's not, you know, that's not how it looks. A lot of people are creating these spaces. It's not a, oh my God, look at their home. You know what I mean? Type of thing. It is they created a space so they can make this little video just so I do get it. So people don't get so distracted. So you can just have kind of like a little space and it's nice and nicely lit. But at the end of the day, kind of like what to, to piggyback up what Keyshawn said, you, your message and your content is what's going to come across. That's what's king all the time over the lighting, over the stuff, over the wording, over the colors, over all of that. You showing up every day in your dank basement will get you just as much as you having this perfect space and you being this person that's polished. It does, that doesn't matter. What matters is you and what you're bringing out. Because have you ever seen them YouTubes and the lighting ain't so great and everything? They giving you some good content and you like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't even care about where they are, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of a mixture of both. But I do, I don't, I don't ever want because I've been doing this now. Nina's been doing it longer than me. I think Joya has too. But I've been in five years, almost six, and I never want people to feel like they need to just bust out the gate and they need to have all of this stuff already thought up because all that will create is paralysis analysis mm -hmm. because I don't know which two fonts yet. I don't know what colors yet. So I'm not going to do nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't have the right background. So I'm not going to do nothing. I don't say this. So I'm not going to do, I'm telling you to do, I'm telling you to do it in the dark. I'm telling you, if you don't have the diva ring yet, like still do it. I'm telling you to do it anyway. And those things will come. And people that follow you will watch your progression and they will see it. And so to go back to your question, Artina, about I want them to know that I'm real. The people that have been following you will know that. They will say, oh, spot it from the bottom. Now we're here. You didn't have no light. Now we got one. You get what I'm saying? Like, and the reason, the reason why I was like asking because I've worked my entire business from my iPhone. I don't even mm -hmm. have a computer. Like my mother had blue the week before I got laid off. And I've worked the whole business from an iPhone. So... I'm going to get fancy and get me a computer next month. So, you know, Woo! I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Like, what are we about to be a Nina? You know, like, are we about to get real creative? Um, and that's, you know, that's why I was asking because a lot of the things I can't do on my phone um, that I feel like I will be able to do on my computer. And I do want to stay me, but also as I grow as a leader, um, you know, to be able to stand out a little bit more. Y'all been so helpful tonight. Girl, growth, growth is big. You know what I would do? What you just said, that needs to be a video, boo. You need to be like, oh, I seen I got a computer. Let me tell y'all, y'all better watch out. Like, I would make it funny and be like, oh, y'all better watch out, honey. These magazine pictures coming for you. Like, make, get them ready that that's what's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, make it funny. Tell your real story. I didn't have no computer, y'all. So that's relatable. And now I do. I'm growing. Everything you just said, 
let your people know that as it comes. Does that make sense? So to kind of be a leeway, segue into, okay, go on, Tina. You know, let them celebrate with you that you're about to up your game a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you did it from your phone and you built such a successful business. Such a successful yeah. business. So then you can tell people, hey, y'all, every chance right. you get it, you can go back to that story and say, hey, hey, girl, I know you're looking at this picture now and it's all pretty, but let me tell you, six months ago, I was using my phone. You get what I'm saying? Like, you always have those little crumbs to throw out so that that girl that is looking at that now curated pretty picture can still go back and be like, oh, oh, I, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? So you can put that in and just make it um do what it do by just always going back and telling the story shanti you are definitely going to church that's right angelique this was such a good discussion let's just stick here um and then we'll pick up on the rest of what we're going to talk about for our next mastermind on the july 5th so as you guys are branding yourself how, what are you talking about how do you know how do you figure out what you want to talk about what you want your brand and words to be does that question make sense it does um hi everyone for me, it's what I'm going through through life and then what I've been through because I know those who are watching are probably going to be the person that I was and want to improve to get to another level. So I just think of like, say the objections or say the things that trials and tribulations or just experiences that you, you have in your life and share it. But like today, I was be able to go to my son's school celebration for summer. If I was in corporate America behind a desk, I would have to be like, ugh, can I do it? What do I have to, you know, juggle in the office to do that? But I work from home. I am still in corporate America, but I have a flexible job where I'm in my house. So just think about, like, what you're going through, your, your niche, um, your avatar, what their things that they're experiencing that can relate to this and how, you, how it's making your life easier. Thank you. Anybody else? Hey, Nika. Hey. So I don't remember which training I did that said, but um, it said, be the person you were five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And so that is what helped me um, with gathering of people I have. Like I had to remember who I was the day that I signed up as a coach. And that's who I talk about now. And that has actually um, started to attract the person that I can help instead of the person that tries to attract who I am now, which is... Um, It, it's conflicting because um, where I'm in, that I have I haven't been down that journey, but I can help them. Um, that has what has Awesome. I just want to discuss real quick. Can you guys hear me what an avatar? An avatar is just a customer profile. It is your ideal perfect customer that would buy from you every time and I don't even like to say target market only because like that can be very vague for people to understand. It's your customer. Like what you do is you list out your customer from start to finish, their characteristics, their fears, their strengths, their qualities, everything about them. A lot of times it'll model you yourself. Um, it can even be the, the ideal person you're trying to, to attract or the person that on, a, on any, any given day, they would buy from you and be like, yes, I want to do this. And what you do is you can build content from those different things that you list out so that you're always speaking to that person when you write your postings. All right. So that's a, like, that's like a key thing. Like you always want to do that. There's a tool that I have. Um, I can send it to you guys. I can post it in the group where you That'd actually be great. can. Can you post in the file yeah. section? Thank yeah, you. I'll, I'll put it in the file section. During our next mastermind, I'm going to be speaking specifically to crafting this ideal customer, this avatar. So I'll be going through some specific questions that you can ask yourself. And, and some of them are kind of like detailed, you know, what gurus have good, good training. It's a, a thick training that I was able to get from my, my leadership course that I did to be certified as a leadership coach. So I'm going to be talking a lot about that on the 5th of July during our next call. I cannot believe this conversation went by so quickly. It is already the 56th after the hour. So let's see, do we have any lingering questions, tips um, about brand building and brand awareness. Uh-oh, looks like Shiana Sh has something. Nina is digital marketer. That's a really good resource for avatars. Digital marketer, yeah, digital marketer, that's, well, 
there's a lot of resources out there for avatars, so I guess we'll talk about it during the next call. But um, digital marketers are a really good one, and they have like a free training or something. Uh -huh. But there's also um, for your branding, there's a few uh, few like free resources out there that like I can post in the group. But there's one specifically; it's a branding quiz. So you fill it out based on like certain questions or whatever, and then they send you a report to tell you, well, you're uh, like, for me, I was, I think, a queen or something. So it says like, I like bold and like my color scheme is X and they give me like different um, uh, like styles for my text and that kind of stuff so that it shows you like what kind of images you like and should put out there. So I can put that in the group. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So no any your questions? I see you, Joelle. Um, just lastly, um, before we wrap up, I want you guys, because I think it's so, so important to keep your eyes on your own paper, right? So you can get count, caught up in branding. And I said it when I said it, uh, I'm not as successful as I should be because I spend a lot of time on things that are pretty and make me happy, right? Um, the things that this business isn't hard, right? It's not easy, it's very simple. Artina, you do the four vital behaviors. It works for you, right? Never change who you are. If I show up and something ain't lightning or glittering or there's going to be a question, Joelle, are you sick? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> if you show up, with a crown on your head, I, I literally wear a tiara. With a crown on your head, that's going to be, that's not who you are, right? So you guys, remain authentic to who you are. I've always been uh, out of the box, over the top, and people, a lot of people don't relate to that. I'm okay with that. My tribe grows slowly, and I'm okay with that, right? because I attract the, the people that like a damn glitter desk. <laughs> like who wants that, right? And I'm okay with that. So just re polish yourself, absolutely, because you can always get better, but never change who you are at your core. Never change what's working. I heard Melanie Mitro say that, right? Learn new things, but never change what is working for you. Does that make sense? So much so, sense. I, I, so keep your pink font, and I send it to you in a private message. You keep, you keep it pink, you keep it plain, you keep it simple, and you keep talking to the moms with four kids, right? Because they relate to that. Now maybe your font gets a little more crisp because you get a computer. <laughs> but it remains simple in who you are. Branding is you. You're branding you. It ain't these colors. It's not colors. It's not. It's who you are. Joyo is glitz and glamour. So is Shanta. People know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Artina is not. She's a simple pink girl, right? Stick with that. Nothing's wrong with that. If you guys haven't followed Crystal Monroe, she's on here. She's really quiet. Um, but her brand is very much her story. Go to her page. It's very much her story. It's nothing fancy. It's her transformation. That is her brand. Her brand is showing up every day and showing the transformation that she's gone through, that she's going through. There are different ways to brand things. Absolutely. Don't get caught up in the glitz and glamour because that's where I like that. I like that so much. Thank you. I appreciate that vulnerability and for reminding us of that, Joelle. All right, guys. Again, this was a great discussion. I've asked for none other than um, Executive Director of the Canadian and International Markets to, to come on and, and to close us out. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Arnold to to. to End our phone call. Arnold Nakaha, happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. Happy I'll birthday. keep you short because uh, I know you guys have been on masterminding, great, you know, putting together some great thoughts and action plans. And uh, besides, the family wants me home to eat some cake, maybe vegan cake. Um, here, here's what I thought I would uh, end with. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into tactical stuff. I wanted to share a story. I just came back uh, from Montreal this weekend. 
and I met with a coach that I've been working with now for four years. And I think that her story, uh, while different, is relatable to uh, a lot of you in a lot of ways. So this coach, when I started working with her, uh, she's a, she was uh, barely a diamond coach. She was one of those heart attack diamonds. Every Thursday, you don't know if you've got diamond or not, right? Uh, some, some of you might have some of those diamonds. Some of you might be going through some of those fluctuations, right? And so I want to share a series of things that she was going through and, um, and, you know, give me a nod or maybe just acknowledge it as I'm going through some of the um, obstacles that she was going through. So uh, this particular coach, um, how much of a chance would you give her to be successful uh, if she didn't have an active upline? Um, if she had an upline that started and then, and then stopped, started and stopped, some of you might be in that position. Uh, what if that same coach uh, was in a market that nobody was paying attention to, uh, the company really hadn't spent much uh, time into. The upline wasn't even from that market. Uh, they really did not understand the market in general. It's a different language. Uh, so there were no resources, and a lot of resources had to be put together. Um, how much of a chance would you give that coach? If that coach uh, had, been, had just moved to a brand new state, a brand new province in this case, did not know a soul, uh, felt alone, was suffering postpartum depression, uh, was, you know, really even struggling getting from the living room to the kitchen uh, without thinking about what lays, you know, what lied ahead of, of her. How much of a chance would you, would you give her if uh, some of her very best friends that she started with, uh, that she thought would be the ones that help her crush this business, uh, decide to go back to work, decide uh, to call her business and what she did, a pyramid scheme, a waste of her time. These things never work. Uh, you're, you are better than that. Go back to that cushy government job, okay? How much of a chance would you give that coach? Here's what the next three years looked like for that coach. <clears throat> Number one, he took some sacrifice. Uh, he took some risks. Uh, the very first summit that this coach was able to go to, she spoke with her husband. Her husband happens to be supportive. That's one of the positive things that, were, that was happening in her life. And she bought a $1,500 ticket. Flying from Canada is super expensive. And she went to, her, uh, to our Las Vegas summit. That was one of our first uh, summits that we held in Vegas. And then the next thing that she did uh, was she uh, created uh, tools and she made enough noise that we took notice, that other people took notice, uh, and, and we started supporting her more, right? Um, the other thing is, she came to a crossroad. Uh, Joyelle, that, you know, I, I thought what you just shared was brilliant. She had to make a decision. Uh, many times, um, we tend to want to gather as much as possible versus just get focused on one area of the business or the marketplace that we know we're going to be the very best at and dominate. And so she had to make a, she had to make a decision while before she was going after both the English and the French market. In this case, I said, you know, the best thing you can probably do and where there is no crowd, nobody's there. And, and it's probably because there's no tools, there's no support there is the French market. You need to spend more time there. You need to be the best at it. You need to be the person that provides the, 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 the support and, and uh, the follow through to those people because they have some of the same problems that we have. Let's think about our market, whatever your market is. Is there something that, is there a need, is there something out there that you know is not being covered, uh, you know, in the marketplace, right? Are there people that need what we have? Are you the best position to do that, right? Long story short, and the last thing, the last pin, pin of this is she had to go through a season of imbalance. And when I talk imbalance, I'm talking late nights, early mornings, you know, work until you're literally just, you know, drop dead tired. And she had to do all that. And that person is none other than Emily Robidas. Uh, Emily Robidas, which last week just reached the, the million club. The million club. Working in a market that nobody uh, was in, uh, working from an inside dead leg, working with no upline support, and having to figure out on, 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 on her way up, right? Here's what I see. I see some brilliant people on these calls. 
I see some people that are, that are passionate. I see some people that are going against the grain. I see some people that are doing what most people are not willing to do. And that is the reason that you will be successful. My plea for you is to find your niche, to find your path, to put the blinders on, to, to work hard and to rely on, on this community because we're going to do some great things. And by the way, we're just getting started. We're gonna go to the United Kingdom. But before we go there, Let's handle this market right here. And I promise you, I promise you, we're going to build an incredible market that all of us will be proud of. So, uh, Keyshawn, thanks for having me. I look forward to jumping on more of these calls. Uh, certainly look forward to providing more support and doing all that I can. And uh, just kudos to you, Keyshawn, for what you're doing. Uh, can we just all give her like... Oh, Y'all better stop. <laughs> this is you guys. Incredible. <laughs> Uh, love you, Keish. Love all of you. And um, look forward to seeing a lot of you at Summit. So if there's a get-together, Keish, let me know, okay? Yes, there and definitely me. is. We'll get you the details. All right. Thanks for having me. Have a Thank great you, night. Everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank I'll get you. the recording up, posted, if not tonight, tomorrow morning. This was a great call, and we will continue our conversation on July 5th at a new time, 8 Eastern time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard time. All right, guys. Mwah.